people will, might know you as a Claire Hurler, all star winner, all that kind of stuff. But we want to hear about your new book. You've written mm. a book about teenagers, kind of two teenagers. So, Tony, yeah. where did this come out of? Good question. As a teenager, I was, you know, I was, I loved a bit of crack and that, but I was probably the only place I felt confident or comfortable was actually on a hurling pitch. Off it, I felt weak. I hated the look of myself, like a lot of teenagers do. But in my 20s, uh, the, the easiest way to say how the book came about was when I was, my father died when I was um, living in Canada and I was commuting back to play with Claire every three weeks from university in Canada. And when he died, like it really took me by surprise. And I ended up going through a period of depression, didn't say anything to anyone and then had a breakdown in 2008. So like the week before going out to play Waterford in the Munster Championship, I was having a, a panic attack in the dressing rooms of part of Gaelic grounds just so no one would see it, like going into the, the bathroom to have a panic attack. But I didn't even know what they were. You know, I, I never met anyone with depression, at least no one talked about it. So when I kind of pieced myself back together then, I heard about Jim Steins and his work in Melbourne with teenagers through his documentary and I went yeah. down to Melbourne with another fellow and said, look, can we just study what you're doing? Jim was dying at the time. And they said, do you want to meet Jim? We said, no, we just want to study what REACH, your, the foundation does. And they, and when I saw what they did with teenagers, I was here, look, man, if we if we had this, I'd have another four all-stars to fight this. <laughs> I was probably lucky to get the one yeah. <laughs> because it was all about the still in the sense of, <laughs> It's still in a bit of a sense of confidence, a sense of self-awareness, so that like you can have the crack and you can also have the, the conversations with your mates when you know they need to have them. So we brought that back to Ireland. We called it sore, as in to you know to take off. And we I spent ten years going in and out of schools just listening, fifty thousand teenagers just listening, asking them how do I how do I connect with you so that we can have a real honest conversation and. You know I went all over the world sourcing everything from acting coaches to psychologists to train us to do this and then when the pandemic hit someone said you should put that in a book and I said no that's like an old phase in my life I'm not interested in that anymore and then a fellow from Clare asked me would you write a quote for teenagers and I said ah I don't want to do that they're sick of quotes from adults but our son was like four weeks old and he had bad colic so I used to be driving him around close to where I live in the Wicklow Mountains just driving him trying to get him to sleep and this one even a quote came to me it was like it was painted on the windscreen it was like the most important relationship you'll ever have is with yourself. All the others are secondary. And I said, that's that's what the book should be about. It's about not being afraid. It's about being braver. And so then over the next nine weeks, lads, the book basically tumbled out. And nine weeks later, I said, there it is. And we call it the Teenager's Book of Life. I partnered with a brilliant kind of illustrator artist. And now it's like going all over the world. People all over the world are reading it. So it's, it's kind of amazed me. What were the, the main issues you saw, the big issues facing teenagers? Well, like, it's a funny stage of life. Is a lot of us forget it quickly because it's either a great crack or we don't remember much of it or it was painful, but we move on. The issues mostly that I would have seen, Johnny, is like everything from just not being comfortable in themselves or um, probably the best way to explain is to explain what SOAR did. We'd go in and we'd create, we'd train people in their 20s to create the most honest conversation, like the, the conversation you'd have with your best mate, maybe, but you'd never have it with the rest of your class. We would create an environment where that would happen. You'd have lads coming out, you know, standing up and say, the thing that you don't know about me is this. You'd have people, big rugby lads, bawling their eyes out because they missed their granddad because he's the one fella who he could talk to. And everything in between, girls standing up because they're self-harming or you name it. I remember one workshop. That, She's Tony. Yeah. How do you create that environment? It's, it looks straightforward when you're a teenager. It just feels like it's happening. But we would have done a lot of work with Reach to understand everything from, you know, the hero's journey, Star Wars. Like, that's the hero's journey story. It has an arc. So we would yeah. have understood that. The facilitators would embody what we're hoping to create. So at the start, I'd stand up and I'd say, look, this is what pe who people think I am. But the reality is, you know, I've, I've had a okay. breakdown. I didn't want to be here. And all of a sudden they're like, whoa, okay, that's honest. And that's what they're looking for, yeah. I think, at that age, is to like to really talk honestly about life because they think a lot of the adults are pretending and, and they're right. So all types of yeah. issues, man, everything you can think of, everything. Do you think, like, obviously things are a lot different than, than when we were all teenagers. I mean, like, I have a teenage sister, she's 15. I know the crack that's going on at the moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, there seems to be a lot of pressure on teenagers to 
fit in or like you know well they have a phone so i should have yeah. a phone they're on social media so i should have so- social media like obviously social media as we all know can be great but it can also be a nightmare do you think that's massively affecting teenagers in ireland I like when i was 15 i used to go to this disco and i used to get the shit kicked out me every thursday night because it was like the lads from the neighboring club held this disco in their hall like and i'd walk in we might have had played them the week before and all of a sudden i go home another chip tooth but like Back, oh, you know, back then, if you loved the gob, no one saw it. Like, whereas, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. imagine now. Yeah. Like, it's a different. It's such a different world because the stakes are higher, and yeah, how you look is more important. It kind of yeah. mattered back then, but now it's like it's everything. Because like, if you don't look like someone on Instagram that you follow, who spent a lot of money curating the photo shoot to look a certain way, then you can look mm. at your own life and say, well, my life doesn't add up. It's not enough. And that, that is a challenge. Us three probably, you're younger than me, but us three definitely didn't have to uh, contend with it. Oh no, man. When we were going to teenage discos, you could be shifting all kinds of rough yokes. You, <laughs> you know what I mean? We know one saying nothing about it. <laughs> I know. The problem is now when you when you do something, or you know, like we've all fucking done stupid things when we were teenagers, or mm. we've all like, you know, fucking probably had someone who was who was a bit mean to us. But like that yeah. used to be like in school, and then you go home at three o'clock. Yeah. Now it's fucking constant. It's round the clock. Now it follows you around, but like that's that's for sure. Yeah, and like I think there's a lot. Like depends how far down the rabbit hole you want to go. There's a lot of stuff that's happening. Like you'll see now how it's clear now that a lot of parents aren't coping. You know, they're finding life difficult emotionally, mentally, and so it's not just our teenagers. But I think this is the first time in history of our of our country, and it was where we're talking about it. So we just realized a lot of the problems that used to be hidden or pushed under the carpet or drank away or whatever, they're just, they're up for grabs now. And, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 in some ways, it's, I think it's a good thing. It has to happen. Do you think that's because of lockdown that it's been brought to the fore or just in movement in general? I think both. I think it was coming. Like when I think about going into schools when we started in 2012, you know, by the time I was kind of finishing my tour of duty, I was almost like in bits after nine years of it in 2019. Like the, even the young fellas were so much more emotionally intelligent. I'd go in thinking that they were a certain way and then they'd have conversations. I'd be like, oh, geez, you guys are very open, aren't you? Um, and they'd be talking. And you could see that even over the course of nine years. Yeah, definitely. You see that change. Definitely. Just in the evolution in how open people are, how they have language, like emojis, for example. Even that, being able to name your emotions, that's a change from 10 years ago. So it's moved on. And that's what kind of why the book, I think, has hit a core. Because I'm not an expert. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a t- teacher. But I, I said I'd write as honestly as I could about all of it. And then somehow that's just hit, hit a chord. And parents are picking it up and reading it and going, geez, maybe I should talk to my 14-year-old like that. Maybe they'd actually be able for it. And the 14-year-old is reading it saying, Jesus, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one that's going through this. Yeah, I, th- I think that's a massive thing from from like parents now. Like I think in our day, it used to be just shout at them loud enough, yeah. and they'll just fucking, they'll, they'll, you know, it's it'll just click with them. One of these days, it'll just. Uh, whereas yeah. now it's kind of like you're as well off. Like you know, I'd be saying to my mother, like, oh, you know, there's no point losing head if she did. Like yeah, you're as well yeah. off just sit her down, like, and and now and I think that's nearly the handiest part. I mean, you'd nearly be just treating them like your friends now, to well, be honest, in, like teenagers. Like. In, in a way, you're bang on, man, because like I think about my father like jesus he was a fantastic man but like i can't ever remember a conversation where he put the armor on me and said look this is what you need to expect now you're starting to go with girls they're going to wreck your head but this is what you need to yeah. do like and when you get married yeah. then it's a whole other like never yeah whereas no come back to me in 15 years and you're married i'll, I'll explain to you again yeah, exactly. <laughs> i've learned so much i'm very expert seven children i'll tell you how hard that is <laughs> i don't so, my father had what are the what are the big pieces of advice you could give to young people or the parents listening to this? Just buy the book. No, no, I'm rich. Yeah. <laughs> buy the, buy the book and read it. And find out for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, um, I'm always slow about giving advice because, like, I'm giving advice based on my life experience. But one yeah. of the things I did want to get through with the book was, you know what? It's going to be okay. Whatever you're going through it will be okay. It's, things have a way of working themselves out. Like to parents, I always say, I have so many parents ring me and say, look, Johnny's 14, my my wife and myself are going through a divorce, you know, or my husband and myself are going through a divorce. He's getting angry, what do I do? Or he's in his room more. And I said, well, that's kind of normal. Like, that's, just trust him. Like, mm. 
to trust your teenager that they're wiser than you realize is one I would definitely say for parents. Just look at them and say, actually, mm. he's much more able than I give him credit for. So I'm going to let him kind of find his way a bit. But I'll, he, I'll be the size of the pinball machine if he, if he starts to struggle. I'll be here if he needs yeah. me. But you know what? I think he's going to be okay. That's, that goes a long way. They'll feel that off you. And they'll know yeah. that you're, you're, you're kind of trusting them. And then the other one for parents is like, don't, don't hide your humanity. Like, don't, don't pretend you've got it all sorted out. They'll respect you more and they'll connect with you more if you are allowed to let them see that, you know what, you struggle as well or sometimes you don't have all the answers. And um, so that's maybe two, two for parents is trust them and allow them to see that you are also trying to figure this out because they'll be more empathetic than you realize. And then for teenagers, it's just, Jesus, have as much crack as you can because... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you'll, you'll be miserable long enough. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, uh, do you think, Tony, like, if teenagers are able to, like, you know, get this help and, and really improve and feel more comfortable in their own skin, that we're going to stop problems down the line when they become adults? Because, like, I think a, a lot of us can probably say, like, me and Johnny have definitely, but we've been through counselling, like, and, and we've no bother saying that. like, But, like, the thing, the thing is, like, People look back on being a teenager and they're like, it was great crack. And then when they actually look back on it, like, properly, mm. they'll go, that was fucking shit enough. Like, I yeah. probably was going through stuff and didn't yeah. even know it. And maybe if I got the help then, I wouldn't be where I am now. It has such an effect on you. It really shapes you. Yeah, it? yeah. It Do you think it's important that they can get, you know, get that help at a young age? Yeah, it's essential because realistically, every other area of life in terms of, if you look at surgery, for example, medicine, surgery, you go looking at what it was like 200 years ago. It's like, geez, like an abattoir in West Clare or, or like in Canalty or somewhere. You know, what, what you're training with your Loch Nan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Hidden Shannon or Crushin with your Loch Nan 2000. That's what surgery was like 200 years ago. <laughs> Whereas, you know, you look at, but now look at surgery. You know, it's robotics. Things are happening which are like sci-fi. Now you look at education and I love teachers because I think it's one of the hardest jobs in the world. But 200 years ago and today, it hasn't changed that much. It's probably the only discipline that hasn't. Now, that's open to some, some debate, but really the method, we have the knowledge, we give it to you, you sit the exam, you're ready for life. That, was, that hasn't changed. Whereas the research, if you were to look at the research, 75% of mental health issues arise from 16 onwards. You know, 16 to 25, that's when they arise. Because at that stage of our life, we're very vulnerable. We don't have an adult identity. Yet, we maybe don't have a lot of ways of coping with what we're going through. We don't have the strategies. Like, we don't have the playbook yet. And so, I couldn't agree with you more. That's where I'm hoping, at least, the book can help parents and teenagers earlier to make sense of this. Because really, it's just making sense of life. That's what the book is doing for people. And there's lots of other ways of doing it, but it's definitely needed earlier. Do you think... Do you think that, like, you know, what, what you're doing with your foundations, do you think similar stuff like that could be incorporated into schools more? Uh, like, yeah. you know, I mean... It, or into the actual curriculum. Yeah, into the actual like, Because yeah. when I was in TY, like, you know, we, we went away to Ballybunion and some guy came in and told a story and I remember being like, fucking hell, I never heard anybody, you know, talk like that yeah. before. And, I, like, it was during transition year that I kind of felt like, oh, well, I don't have to try and just fucking impress everyone else, yeah. you know, in school. I can just be myself now, mm. and it's grand, you know, and mm. I took that from transition year. But a lot of lads I know just went, like, oh, I want to go to school as quick as I can. Yeah. And now, like, you know, I, I, they're probably struggling a little bit, like, friend, even friends of mine, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like, the, the thing about the teenage years is they're the ones where we're usually most, in some ways, like, we have that, like, we're so excited by life, we're kind of courageous, we'll try shit. Whereas that, that is the time where if we harness that, we'd have those skills for life. We'd have a zest for life. Mm. So, you know, the schools, I meet so many teachers and they're brilliant, but it's difficult because if you're trying to change the school system, it's like trying to turn an ocean liner with a toothpick. You know, it's tough going. <laughs> so yeah. things like transition year are brilliant. That's why I so focused on that year is because you do things which are about who you are, who you want to be. Not what m number of points you want to get. It's like, who who are you? And where are you going? Mm. Like, What makes you tick? How are you different and unique to every human being of all the seven billion? And like, uh, then you start to talk about things where you realize, just, I'm not the only one that goes home and like maybe the odd night cries myself to sleep and does something else to myself to, to sleep as well. I'm not the only one that does yeah. that. <laughs> Jesus, there's other people like me. 
they had the same issues as me. Wow. And yeah. you feel much less like you're on your own then. And then you're much more, you feel much more belonging. Like lads, the thing I learned probably most from SOAR is, and from meeting those 50,000 teenagers is, our drive for a sense of identity and belonging is really important to who we are. And if we can start to understand it earlier in life, we'll make better choices then in our 20s and 30s. And, mm. and, and we'll get to where we want to get with, with less pain along the way. That's beautiful, man. Yeah, I know. I'd fucking listen to this all day. And, and you know, and in general, we hate clear people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Well, Tim, well, one Tim thing broke my heart in the 99 Munster minor final. He hammered us. Great. Yeah. Great. No. That, that'll make us sleep tonight, Tony. I'll tell you, thinking of that, going to bed happy. 